Hey Hawaii, welcome to the channel. Today I'll be showing off every weapon in Valheim, of course including the shields. I'll also briefly go over how you can get each weapon and they'll be ordered roughly from weakest to strongest in their given category. There should be timestamps throughout the video so you can skip to specific parts. If you wanted to see just the swords, you could do that. I do hope you enjoy the video, subscribe if it is interesting or helpful, and if you'd like to see how I built some of the structures that you will see throughout the video, make sure you stay tuned for those uploads in the very near future. Now before we get into it, I'll quickly point out to any of you newer players that each metal variant is unlocked after defeating a specific boss. To avoid spoiling things for people who want to figure some stuff out on their own, I'll leave the methods to obtaining different materials in the pinned comment down below along with a link to all the recipes. For the special weapons in this list I will mention the materials and methods required to obtain them so don't worry about that if that was a concern. Now let's get straight into it. So we're going to kick off this video with the blunt weapons. The very first blunt weapon you'll acquire in this game is the club. The club can be crafted at the start of the game out of just wood. It deals 12 blunt damage per hit and is held as a one-handed weapon. The bronze mace can be crafted after defeating the first boss and traveling into the black forest for copper and tin. The mace deals 35 blunt damage per hit. Thirdly, we have the Iron Mace. This can be obtained after finding iron and deals 55 blunt damage per hit. The Porcupine is a special weapon that deals both blunt and pierce damage. This is a late game weapon you can acquire after traveling to the Plains Biome. You'll need to have acquired Linen Thread and have access to a level 4 Forge to craft this weapon. Arguably the best one-handed blunt weapon in the game is the Frostner. This weapon deals 35 blunt damage, 40 frost damage, and 20 spirit damage, all in the same hit. To craft this weapon you will need 10 ancient bark from swamp trees, 20 silver from snow biomes, 5 freeze glands from drakes, and 5 yumer flesh, which is obtained from the trader. The combination of damage types makes this weapon incredibly strong against undead enemies like druggers and wraiths, and the frost damage deals extra to any enemies who have the wet debuff, whether that be from the ocean, a river, or the rain. For the two-handed blunt weapons we have the Stag Breaker, able to be crafted after defeating the first boss. This weapon deals 20 blunt damage and 5 pierce damage. The second and final two-handed blunt weapon is the Iron Sledge. This hammer deals 55 blunt damage and has 200 knockback. Moving on to the axes, we have the weakest being the Stone Axe. This axe deals 15 slash damage. Second, we have the Flint Axe. This axe is only slightly better as a weapon with a slash damage of 20. The Bronze Axe is a worthy upgrade from the Flint Axe, dealing a hefty 35 slash damage per hit. The Iron Axe has a slash damage of 55, increasing by 20 from the Bronze variation. Currently in the game, there is a big gap where there would usually be a silver weapon. Because of this, the next obtainable axe upgrade is the Black Metal Axe, dealing almost double the slashing damage of the Iron Axe with 95 slash damage. Now the last axe in the game is the Battle Axe. This isn't last because it is the best, but rather because it fits into its own category. The Battle Axe deals 75 slash damage and is a slower two-handed weapon. The only two-handed axe weapon in the game currently, and it sits around the same area as the Iron Axe in terms of obtainability. Moving on to the Utgers or Hellbirds, there are only three in the game currently, the first being Bronze with a pierce damage of 45. The second being the Iron Hellbird with a pierce damage of 65. And lastly, the Black Metal Variation with a whopping 105 pierce damage. All three of these polearms have a spinning attack as their special attack, using the middle mouse button to activate it.
There are four bows in this game currently, the first being the Crude Bow, unlockable very very early in the game, it has a pierce damage of 22. The Fine Wood Bow is unlocked next, it has a pierce damage of 32. Thirdly we have the Huntsman Bow, unlocked around the third boss, it deals a pierce damage of 42. Now the final and most powerful bow in Valheim is the Draugr Fang. This bow deals 46 pierce damage and 5 poison damage on each hit. Bow damage is also affected by the arrows used. The first spear you'll have access to in this game is the Flint Spear, with a pierce damage of 20. Second is the Bronze Spear, with a pierce damage of 35. Thirdly is the Ancient Bark Spear, with an increased 55 pierce damage. The strongest spear currently in the game is the Fang Spear. This spear deals 70 pierce damage. Note that all spears can be thrown using their secondary attack by pressing the middle mouse button. The final weapon that fits into the spear category is the Abyssal Harpoon. This can be crafted with chitin that you'll find on the small islands throughout the ocean biomes. It deals only 10 damage but is meant to be used to attach to and reel in enemies. It can be very helpful with pulling in an enemy from something or helping tether an enemy for your friends to kill. It is the strongest way to capture and kill sea serpents currently and on a miss the harpoon is instantly returned to the user. There are only 4 knives in the game, the first being the flint knife, dealing 6 pierce damage and 6 slash damage. The next is the copper knife, upgrading to both 9 slash and pierce damage. Thirdly we have the abyssal razor, this can only be crafted out of chitin found on the small islands throughout the ocean biome. It deals 12 slash damage and 12 pierce damage. Last but certainly not least, we have the Black Metal Knife, dishing out 18 slash and pierce damage. All knives do have a leap attack as their secondary attack. There are currently 11 shields in this game, I will go over them in order from weakest block power to strongest block power. First off we have the wood shield, the wood shield has a block power of 20. Next is the iron shield, not to be confused with the banded shield, as you can see this is one of the two glitched shields in this game. It exists in the game's code but is not obtainable through legitimate methods. It is still usable and has a block power of 35. If you wanted to spawn this in yourself, the code will be on screen now. The Wood Tower Shield is the tower variant of the Wood Shield, also with a block power of 35. The Bronze Buckler is the only bronze shield coming in with a block power of 45. The Banded Shield is the round iron variant with a block power of 60. The Iron Tower Shield is the Tower Shield Iron Variant with a block power of 75. There is only one Silver Shield, appropriately named the Silver Shield. This shield also has a block power of 75. Next up is the Black Metal Shield, being the rounded variant with a block power of 90. We then have the Serpent Scale Shield with a block power of 90. This can be easily acquired by killing a Sea Serpent. The Black Metal Tower Shield is next with a block power of 105. And lastly, coming in as the best shield in the entire game is the Knight Shield. This is the second glitch shield in this list. The shield is held sideways on both your back and in your arms. It also counts as a rounded shield and can parry attacks. This shield has a block power of 120 and can be spawned in using the command on screen. I'm hoping this serves as a placeholder for potential future knight style armor and weapons, who knows. 
Now onto the swords, the part I think most people care about the greatest. The first sword you can obtain in the game is the bronze sword. It is shorter than the others and deals 35 slash damage. Next up we have the iron sword, it's a big jump from the bronze with 55 slash damage. Thirdly we have the silver sword, a very fast and strong one handed weapon with a slash damage of 75. Now we move on to the end game version, the black metal sword. This bad boy has a slash damage of 95. Now onto one of the weapons a lot of you would have been waiting for. This is Dernwin, a fire sword. This sword is predicted to be available through the newer lava type areas that will hopefully be updated in the future. Unfortunately, it is not available through legitimate means. It has a slash damage of 55 and a fire damage of 30. This fire sword can be spawned in with the commands on screen. And finally, we move on to the most powerful weapon in the entire game. The Rainbow Sword, or as it's actually called in the game, the Cheat Sword. This sword is definitely not able to be crafted and comes with a slash damage of 10,000. I'll show you on screen how insane this thing is. It is only obtainable through the commands shown on screen. And there you are, that's every single weapon and shield in the entire game, excluding some extras such as the torch, which don't really count. I hope you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing if you did. Thank you again to all my YouTube members and everyone who chooses to support me. Stay tuned for more videos like this in the future, join the Discord if you're interested in that sort of thing, and until next time, stay safe guys. Peace.